Hello students, in this video I am going to give you some tricks to solve the questions related to meiosis. In the previous videos we studied about mitosis, meiosis and I have given some tricks to solve uh, questions related to mitosis. Now in this video I am going to give you tricks, uh, some tricks to solve uh, questions, neat questions related to meiosis. Okay. So in the previous video I have given some tricks to solve mitotic uh, division questions. There I have given uh, the number of chromosomes, I have given the number of chromosomes, number of chromatids, DNA molecules, DNA strands and even number of centromeres and number of kinetochores, amount of DNA in different phases of mitosis that is during interphase, different phases of interphase and during different phases of mitosis. But here in this uh, video, I am going to give you the number of chromosomes uh, number of chromosomes, number of chromatids and amount of DNA only present in different phases of different phases of meiosis like uh, different phases of interphase and different phases of meiosis 1 and in, and in each daughter cell uh, for, which is formed after meiosis 1 and then in all the phases of meiosis 2 and in each daughter cell of meiosis 2. So actually I am not giving uh, the four other concepts like uh, like number of uh, DNA, number of DNA molecules, number of DNA strands, number of centromeres, number of kinetochores because number of DNA molecules is equal to number of chromatids. Number of DNA strands is double the number of DNA molecules because each DNA molecule is made up of two chromatids. Next, uh, centromeres. Number of centromeres is equal to number of chromosomes. Number of kinetochores is equal to number of uh, chromatids. So, I am not giving those concepts because they are uh, same as what I said now. We are going to see about uh, these three things in different phases of meiosis. Okay, right. Now, a meiocyte. Meiocyte is nothing but that is the cell that undergoes meiosis that enters into meiotic cell cycle. So, now when a meiocyte enters into G1 phase, interphase, first phase of interphase having four chromosomes and 2C amount of DNA, 2C amount of DNA. What will be this configuration in remaining phases? Let's see. Okay. So now a meiocyte has entered into G1 phase having 4 chromosomes and 2C amount of DNA. So 4 chromosomes. These 4 chromosomes are in the form of 4 chromatin fibers. Each chromosome is with 1 chromatin fiber. Hence the number of chromatids is 4. Why we are writing chromatids? Because these chromatin fibers during M phase that means when the cell enters into prophase 1, they get condensed into chromatids. One chromatin fiber gets condensed into one chromatid. Hence, a number of chromatin fibers is equal to number of chromatids. Right. So, each chromosome is represented by one chromatin fiber. That is nothing but one chromatid during G1 phase. Next, cell has entered into S phase. So, when the cell enters into S phase, what happens? DNA replication occurs. So, the amount of DNA becomes doubled. It gets doubled. So, amount of DNA has become 4C. What we studied in the previous videos, amount of DNA gets doubled, but the ploidy remains same and the number of chromosomes also remains same. So, number of chromosomes remains same. That means ploidy is also same. Okay, right. Here, number of chromatids have got doubled because here chromosome is represent each chromosome is represented by two chromatin fibers during S phase because of the replication of DNA. So one chromatin fiber undergoes DNA present in one chromatin fiber undergoes replication to form one more chromatin fiber that gets attached with its parent chromatin fiber or parent DNA molecule. So in this phase each chromosome is represented by two chromatin fibers but in G1 phase each chromosome is represented by only one chromatin fiber that is nothing but chromatid. So here number of chromatids have got doubled. Next, coming to G2 phase. In G2 phase, prophase 1, metaphase 1, it is similar as uh, in case of S phase. All, S phase. So, number of chromosomes are 4, number of chromatids are 8, amount of DNA is 4C during G2. In uh, prophase 1 also, 4 chromosomes, 8 chromatids, 4C amount of DNA. The same case uh, uh, in case of, the same thing in case of metaphase 1 also. Okay, now coming to anaphase 1. So, what happens actually during metaphase 1? All the homologous pairs present inside the cell, pairs of chromosomes present inside the cell align at the center, center of the cell in the form of bivalence that is in the form to form bimetaphasic plate. 
So during anaphase 1, now disjunction of homologous pairs of chromosomes occur, that is separation. After separation of these homologous pairs of chromosomes, half of the chromosomes move towards one pole and half of the chromosomes move towards another pole. So at one pole, how many chromosomes will be there? At each pole of anaphase 1, how many chromosomes? Two chromosomes. And each chromosome is with how many chromatids? Two chromatids. So four chromatids. Two chromosomes. Each chromosome is with two chromatids. So totally how many chromatids? Four chromatids. At each pole of anaphase 1. One pole. At each pole. This pole and this pole. Right. Next coming to amount of DNA. So 2C amount of half of the DNA. 2C amount of DNA is moving towards one pole in the form of two chromosomes. And 2C amount of DNA is moving towards opposite pole of the cell during uh, anaphase 1. Right. So, 2C amount of DNA at each pole. So, if the, in the question, if it is mentioned about each pole, we have to take configuration, this configuration of chromosomes, amount of DNA and number of chromatids. But if it is mentioned like anaphase 1, during anaphase 1, means in the question if it is mentioned like what is the number of chromosomes present inside the cell during anaphase 1 means we have to take entire cell. That means both the poles. Both the poles means so at one pole, two chromosomes. Both the poles, four. At one pole, four chromatids. So both the poles, eight chromatids. At one pole, at each pole, two uh, C amount of DNA. So both poles, both the poles, four C amount of DNA. Now in each daughter cell of meiosis one. Actually after this phase, we have to study about telophase. After anaphase one, we have to study about telophase. Telophase one is similar to anaphase one. Next, at each pole of telophase 1, at each pole of telophase 1 is similar to anaphase, at each pole of anaphase 1. So, each pole of telophase 1 becomes one daughter cell after cytokinesis 1. So, each pole of telophase 1 or at each pole of anaphase 1 is similar to the configuration of number of chromosomes, number of chromatids and amount of DNA present in each daughter cell which is formed after meiosis 1. So, like this number of chromosomes are 2, number of chromatids are 4 and amount of DNA is 2C. 2C. Okay. Right. Now, <coughs> two daughter cells are formed by the end of meiosis 1. These two daughter cells of meiosis 1 become parent cells of meiosis 2. Now, they enter into meiosis 2. Before entering into meiosis 2, they undergo a kind of preparation, preparatory phase that is called interkinesis. We studied about this in the previous video in detail. Okay, after interkinesis, the cells, both the cells enter into uh, meiosis 2, that is into prophase 2, karyokinesis 2. And in that karyokinesis 2 also, first phase is prophase 2. Now, the cell has entered into prophase 2. Each cell is with how many chromosomes? Two chromosomes. So, two chromosomes and the number of chromatids are 4. Amount of DNA is 2C. Now, coming to metaphase 2. Metaphase 2 also two chromosomes, four chromatids and 2C amount of DNA. Now, next coming to anaphase 2. So, what happens during anaphase 2? What happens during metaphase 2? These chromosomes align at the center of the cell to form metaphasic plate not bimetaphasic plate bimetaphasic plate is formed during metaphase 1 but metaphasic plate is formed during metaphase 2 because during metaphase 2 chromosomes 1 1 chromosome align at the center that means univalence align at the center but in case of metaphase 1 bivalence that is nothing but homologous pairs of chromosomes align at the center right so, after alignment at the center, then cell enters into anaphase 2. So, during anaphase 2, what happens? Centromere splits. After splitting of centromere, now chromatids start separating from one another. But in case of anaphase 1, chromosomes start separating from one another. Chromosomes, homologous pairs of chromosomes undergo disjunction. So, these chromosomes start separating from one another, where each chromosome is with two chromatids, which is moving towards, which are moving towards two opposite poles. Whereas here during anaphase 2, chromatid separation occurs due to splitting of centromere. In anaphase 1, there is no splitting of centromere. During anaphase 2 only, there is splitting of centromere. So, chromatids of a chromosome start moving towards two opposite poles. So, what can we take now? During anaphase, at each pole of anaphase 2, now how many chromosomes will be there? Two chromosomes will be there because number of chromosomes have got doubled during anaphase 2 because of splitting of centromere. But the number of chromatids remains same. 
number of chromatids remain same. There is no doubling of number of chromatids, but there is not doubling of number of chromosomes because of splitting of centromere. So, what uh, uh, what is uh, the important thing we need to remember during anaphase two? Number of chromosomes gets doubled, but the number of chromatids remains same. Okay, right. So, amount of DNA remains same. Okay, towards each pole, at each pole of anaphase 2, two chroma chromosomes having each chromo, uh, each chromosome having one chromatid uh, are moving uh, towards two opposite poles of the cell. So, each pole, how many chromosomes? Two chromosomes. And each chromosome is with how many chromatids? One chromatid. So, two chromatids. Amount of DNA is 1C because half amount of DNA is moving towards one pole in the form of two chromo chromosomes or two chromatids also. And remaining half is moving towards another pole. That is 1C. Next coming to each daughter cell. Each daughter cell of meiosis 2 is similar with uh, at each pole of anaphase 2. Okay, telophase 2 is similar to anaphase 2. At each pole of telophase 2 is similar to each pole of anaphase 2. Now each daughter cell. After cytokinesis 2, uh, how many daughter cells will be formed from these parent cells? Uh, four daughter cells because two parent cells two daughter cells of meiosis 1 becomes parent cells of meiosis 2 that means into meiosis 2 two cells enter into meiosis 2 as parent cells which are the daughter cells of meiosis 1 and by the end of meiosis 2 that is by the end of cytokinesis 2 four daughter cells will be formed where from each parent cell of meiosis 2 two daughter cells will be formed right so totally four daughter cells in each daughter cell now how many chromosomes will be there two chromosomes will be there and each chromosome is with one chromatid, so two chromatids, amount of DNA is 1C. So now let's compare each daughter cell of meiosis 2 with the parent cell that has entered into G1. So the parent cell which has entered into G1 is with four chromosomes, where the daughter cell, each daughter cell is with two chromosomes. The amount of, um, the number of chromatids present in parent cell which has entered into G1 is four, here two, half. So, amount of DNA is 2C, here amount of DNA is uh, half, that is 1C. So, this is meiosis is completely, meiosis is called as reduction division, where the number of chromosomes are reduced to half and even ploidy is also reduced to half. So, ploidy is reduced to half, number of chromosomes is reduced to half, number of, uh, amount of DNA is also reduced to half and even number of chromatids are also reduced to half, amount of DNA also got reduced to half. Hence, meiosis is called as reduction division. Where meiosis 1 is called as, also called as reduction division, meiosis 2 is called as equational division. Equational division because this is the parent cell of meiosis 2. Having how many chromosomes? Uh, two chromosomes. So, daughter cell is also with two chromosomes. Hence, it is called as equational division. So, uh, I want to give you, I would like to discuss a uh, few points. So, the actual phase of uh, reduction in the number of chromosomes is anaphase 1. So, during meiosis, during which phase, actual phase of actual reduction of number in number of chromosomes occurs means anaphase 1. Okay, during which phase the number of chromosomes gets doubled but the number of chromatids remain same means anaphase 2. And during which phase, which phase amount of DNA gets doubled means S phase, S phase and even num amount of uh, Chromatids also get doubled, but the number of remain, chromosomes remain same means S phase. So this is all about some tricks related to meiosis to solve the questions, neat questions related to meiosis. So hope you understood all this and you can utilize these concepts to solve this, to solve the questions easily within few seconds. Thank you students.